Okay, now let's go talk about techniques of determining properties of outer space using the electromagnetic spectrum. So, so far we established what the electromagnetic spectrum is. So the next question is, how can we use the electromagnetic spectrum to find out information about outer space? So we use certain principles that we know from physics and chemistry to help us find out information. First principle is known as Wien's law. He's a German uh, physicist, and you pronounce it V with a Wien, Wien's law, even though it's uh, written as W. It, Wien's law is used to find out the temperature of an object in outer space, any object, whether it be a gas or a star. The principle behind this law is that hotter objects emit more light towards the blue end of the spectrum, okay? Hotter objects emit more light towards the blue end of the spectrum. If you remember the other day, we, when within the visible spectrum, we said red has a larger wavelength, and lower frequency, lower energy. Violet has shorter wavelength, uh, higher frequency, higher energy, okay? So for example, if I take a metal, right, and I take that metal, take any metal that you want, and I put it in an oven and I start heating it, I start cranking up the heat, and then it gets hot, hot, hot. What's the first visible color that it will rad uh, uh, radiate in? Red. Yeah, you see? Naturally, before you put it in the oven, what, what is it radiating in? What's before red? Infrared, right? So all objects, including you, me, metal, wood, anything, they are naturally radiating in the infrared. Then you take that metal, you put it in oven, you heat it up. First color it glows in, red. Then if I heat it up some more, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, eventually it will radiate violet. If I get it hot enough, it might radiate ultraviolet. That's what this law is saying. <coughs> Okay, so one way to visualize this um, law is to say this. Imagine you have a star. It's kind of like a red-looking star. What is its spectrum of emission? What, what kind of waves will it emit? Well, what it's showing you here is that it will mainly emit its peak wavelength is about 1,000 nanometers, okay? So its peak wavelength, 1,000 nanometer, its temperature is 3,000 Kelvin. Now, when I make this star hotter, 6,000 Kelvin, now what is it going to radiate? The peak wavelength it radiates in is, well, actually, it's like inversely proportional. If a 3,000 Kelvin star radiates 100 nanometer, 6,000 radiates what? 500. Cut it in half. So what happens, you go from 1,000, you radiate 500, and then you you're now a yellow-looking star primarily. It doesn't mean you're not radiating other waves, but the, the brightest wave you are radiating is yellow. Okay. Now, if I double the temperature of that star, now you have 12,000 Kelvin star. Now what is it mainly going to radiate? Cut that in half, you get 250 nanometer. So now you go from yellow, you cut it in half, 250. So as the wavelength is decreasing, as the wavelength is decreasing, the star is looking more and more violet, you see? You get hotter, hotter, the wavelength goes down, down. When the wavelength goes down, 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 you get more violet, violet, you see? So how is the law used, generally speaking, then? You look at a star, determine its primary color, what the, the color it appears. Then from there, you can determine what temperature it is. You see? So it relates the color of a star to its temperature.
bar is heated to a temperature that causes most of the black powder radiation to be emitted in the red. See, it's glowing red right now. Now they're making it hotter. Keep making it hotter. It starts glowing more, and the peak starts shifting to the left. The peak radiation has shifted to shorter wavelength. So now it's looking yellow. As the bar is heated to highest temperature, it glows in the yellow. The peak radiation has shifted to even shorter wavelengths. If we could continue to heat the bar, it would glow with, <coughs> so let's go over it again. It first is red. Then they keep heating it. The radiation is going up, but it's also shifting to the left. The peak radiation has shifted to shorter wavelengths. And now it says, if we could continue to heat the bar, it would glow with a very blue-white color. Those are the hottest stars, the blue-white ones. See? The yellows are in the middle. The reds are the coolest. Bar is heated to a red. It's the coolest one compared to the others. And then they show you a red star. Let's see? In the sky. So... Now, the next one is an orange star. You see, the, this one is orange. And then the one on the right, yellow star, is this one. And then you can see here, this is yellow. So those, that's the hottest one here, you see, the yellow. The equation that describes this is known as Vion's law. Lambda peak equals three million divided by T. You see how they're inversely proportional to each other? The higher the temperature of the object, the lower the wavelength that it will mostly emit. Hotter objects will appear more bluish. And so you've seen that from using the pictures and stuff. <coughs> As an example, let's take our sun. Its surface temperature equals 5,800 Kelvin. So we can use this law backwards in a backwards way. If we already know its temperature, we can predict what it should mainly emit. So, therefore, Wien's law predicts that it will mainly emit light of wavelength. Then you just simply divide 3 million divided by 5,800. And then when you do this, it already gives you an answer in a nanometer. So 517 nanometer. So corresponds green-blue range. <coughs> Between green and blue, and what happens, our atmosphere absorbs some of that, and then it primarily we get the yellow-looking star. Okay, it appears yellow. So that's what gives it its color. Now, if, we wa if it was any hotter, really way, way hot, it would have appeared more blue, primarily blue. If it was any cooler, quite, quite a lot cooler, it would appear red. So the color that the star appears also is an effect of what our atmosphere is, abs is absorbing and what our atmosphere is reflecting. So our atmosphere does funny tricks too. Okay. Now, we can use this law in the forward order. If I tell you the primary wavelength of a star, you should be able to calculate what its temperature is either way. If I tell you its temperature, then you, you should tell me what wavelength it should radiate. If I tell you its wavelength, then you should tell me its temperature. So if I tell you it's uh, 630 nanometers, 630, you don't have to use the nano, you don't have to do anything with that, just keep it at 630. So if I want to solve for T, how do I do it? I take the T over there, I bring the 630 here. It's called cross multiply, you see? So T therefore equals what? Three million divided by 630, and whatever that gives you, the answer should come out 4,761 
nano, uh, Kelvin. That's units of Kelvin. So which star is colder? This star, right? Our sun is what? 5,800 Kelvin. This star is on the cold side of stars. It's at the colder end. Colder end means it's going to appear more red. And 630 nanometers corresponds to a wavelength of red-looking star. What's therefore the conclusion of this first part? Dean's law is helpful for us to find out what the temperature of an object in outer space is. That, that object can be trillions of light years away. All we have to do is study the light coming from that star, study what primary, what's the primary color of that star, what's the brightest star, what's the brightest color of that star, from there determine its temperature. This is amazing to us that something can be trillions of light years away, but we can still find out information about that object. That's why the electromagnetic spectrum is very helpful for us, you see.